Buying a home is a big deal and having the right agent can make all the difference. But before you jump into the home buying process, there's something crucial you need to handle negotiating a written buyer agreement. This step is all about setting expectations and making sure you and your agent are on the same page when it comes to agent commissions. So today we're going to break down what all that means. Included in this video is the elephant in the room. Will buyers now have to pay their buyer agent commission? The answer is a resounding maybe. First things first, what exactly is a written buyer agreement? Simply put, it's a contract that outlines the services your agent will provide and the compensation they'll receive. It ensures both you and your agent are clear on the rules, responsibilities, and expectations. It's mandatory for all buyer agents before they show you homes in person or through a virtual tour. But if you're just visiting an open house on your own or casually asking about the services, you won't need to sign one, so make sure you're ready to take that next step in your home buying journey before committing to the agreement. I can hear you now. Open houses are the simple way through this. No signed agreement, no negotiations, just submit an offer with the listing agent. Look for my video titled, A Buyer's Guide to Open Houses and Written Contracts to learn more about what this means technically and legally. Well, here's the good news. Almost everything in a buyer agreement is negotiable. You can discuss the services your agent will offer, their compensation, and how long the agreement lasts. Compensation can be a flat fee, a percentage of the purchase price, or even an hourly rate, and you'll probably hear that again. But remember, it's not an option for agents to agree to an open-ended range, like whatever the seller offers, or between X and Y percent ranges. If you get lost in the negotiations, you may want to consult an attorney. Isn't that lovely? This is where you get to outline what's important to you. Do you want your agent to handle everything from finding listings to negotiating the best deal? Or are you more comfortable handling some tasks yourself? Be clear about your expectations so you can negotiate a deal that works for both of you. As I said before, agents have a few ways they can get paid. They might charge a flat fee, a percentage of the purchase price, or an hourly rate, it's crucial for you to understand these options before agreeing to anything. And yes, you can even negotiate for the seller to cover your agent's fee as part of the purchase agreement, I would say, as it was commonly done before. Is that a dangerous thing to say? I, I don't know. But here's the part that buyers and agents are finding really hard to deal with. Will the buyer now have to pay their buyer agent commission? For example, if the buyer and agent have agreed on a certain percentage of the purchase price, to be paid to the buyer agent on closing, and the seller in this example only covers one half that amount in the form of concessions or some such, well, yes, then the buyer owes the difference. Can that agreement be amended or changed? Yes, it can, and I'll cover that shortly. But keep in mind, this is a negotiation and the agent may not accept your terms. For example, if you ask for them to accept getting paid by the hour, they may say no. For me, I would find it really hard to say yes to getting paid by the hour. You may want to interview a few agents to find the best fit. Start by asking them about their services, experience, and how they handle negotiations. Remember, realtors are bound by a strict code of ethics, so they're required to be open and honest with you. If you feel pressured or unsure about anything, it's okay to walk away. Your perfect agent is out there. Don't settle for anything less than what's a good fit for you. So what if you want to change the terms after signing? No problem. You and your agent can mutually agree to amend a contract. Just keep in mind that your agreement and sometimes state laws might dictate how and when changes can happen. Always read your contract thoroughly and don't hesitate to ask your agent any questions. If negotiations break down and you can't find common ground, don't sweat it. You're not obligated to sign anything you're uncomfortable with. Keep looking until you find an agent who aligns with your needs and expectations. It's better to keep searching than to end up in a frustrating relationship during one of the biggest purchases of your life. By the way, if you're looking to move someplace in the country and you need help finding a great agent, send me a text or an email. I'm part of a network that spans the entire U.S. and I'd love to connect you with the right person who can guide you through the process. Negotiating a written buyer agreement isn't just about getting the best deal. It's about finding an agent you can trust to have your back during one of the most important decisions in your life. Take your time, ask the right questions, and don't be afraid to speak up for what you want. 
I personally expect the negotiations to mostly be limited to the commission amount in the buyer rep agreement versus flat fee or hourly. I believe the flat fee and hourly wage approach will ultimately be an agent or a company's business model, just like the flat fee listing stuff that goes on today. The good news in all of this is that everything is negotiable. The bad news in all of this is everything is negotiable. But remember, like what was said earlier, if you negotiate a deal and find out you can't handle it, you may be able to amend the contract. Hey, if you're getting value from my videos and you want to be the first to learn about the changing real estate market, hit subscribe and tap that bell. That'll help both of us. Thanks so much. See you later. Talk to you soon.